Hi, it's time for the Twice Removed Podcast with Linda and Gina, where we talk about all things genealogy, including making connections with long-lost relatives while snooping in on our ancestors. Hey, it's good to know where you come from. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. Today, Linda and I discuss how to create a narrative from the genealogical data you've gathered surrounding your ancestors. Okay, so what's the story? So my great-grandfather decided in his infinite wisdom in the early 1900s to leave his wife and their five children and come to America to find a better life. This was in 1907. So, okay, who was going to have the better life? You know, because the one son could never come because he was deaf and they wouldn't accept him at Ellis Island. Are you kidding? No, they wouldn't. That's that's the <gasps> way that was. That you couldn't do that, right? And so he would have to always stay in Germany and somebody would have to raise him, so that would be my great grandmother. Right. So anyway, um he came over 1907 and got established for a couple of years. And then his sister-in-law who was my great grandmother's sister and her husband and two girls came over like two years later. And then the next year, one of the daughters, not the oldest daughter, but the second oldest daughter came over and she was like 11 years old. And she had to go straight into a household to work at at 11 years old, because that's what they did. She was a governess, you know? So there was like that kind of thing. And, you know, you figure, well, sure, okay, then we'll just slowly bring the others in because the oldest daughter stayed and helped mom with the other two kids or three kids. Yeah. So they were never together? So, hang on. So, that was 1910. World War I began, and guess who had to register for the draft in his new country? Oh. And guess who he... (laughs) Guess who got called up. (laughs) No, he didn't get called up, fortunately, Uh. because he was already older. I would say, I don't know, 40-something years old by then. But guess what that did? That made it so that there was a time when nobody came over. And the next kid didn't come over until 1921. And they were 22 years old by then when they came over. And I don't think anybody went back and forth visiting. He never came back to Germany. Um, And then the next kid came in 1923. And then the next kid came in 1927, and they were all, um, by then, they were all in their late teens or early 20s. But then my grandfather was still in Germany with his mother. And he had his family started pretty much at that point. He, I think my mom was born and her brother, her older brother. So oh, my head he, is like exploding right now. <laughs> you know, right? Like splitting the, fam- splitting the family up like that to find a better life. And then so all of those kids that came over to America except one started families and did their thing. World War II began <laughs> in 1939, right? Or something like that? Uh-huh. Yeah, 245. And so that's when the son was drafted and had to fight for his new country. And guess who we were at war with again? Uh, his old country. Still Germany again. Yeah. So could you just imagine what that was like? I mean, this is the narrative I pulled out of this. Finding all these dates through the immigration and just um, census, and you could tell where everybody lived, and like the time in between, and nobody visiting for a really for a really long time because there were wars going on. They did come back and visit their mom maybe once or twice each of them. Um, I was gonna just ask that: Did did the father ever come back and visit no. the mom? No. Or the husband, I mean? No. He never <sighs> went back. No. Did he, no, like, I, just marry someone in America? No. Just, they they were still nope, married. Nothing. They were still married. No. He died. He died. No, he had um, he had an application for something. and Oh, it must have been his... Uh, it must have been his citizenship at that point. And it said that he was widowed. And she passed away in 1938. So, he was And there. is that why your great-grandfather came over? Or your... Your mom, I mean, your mom and her family. My mom, no, my mom was born in Germany and 
they all were there and she decided in 1950s that she wanted to come over. Oh, okay. So she came on her own volition. Yeah, she came on her own. That's why I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm first generation born here from that line, you know? Oh my God. That's totally sad. But could you just imagine the stress in my great grandparents, both of them from, for different reasons. Like one of them was over here with the one daughter. Well, yeah. And if he came for a better reason, it's like, then why did he flee? I mean, was he going to be in the, you know Hitler's army or not 1907 <laughs> but but I mean but it's just like it's like how better could it be when you weren't with your family it was he sending know. the money all back home I mean I'm sure he was I don't know any of that, those details but um I mean it just makes you wonder because it's like yeah. you're not with who you're supposed to be with you know type of thing and, and so he's hanging out with his wife's sister and her family and she, my great grandmother, is hanging out with his brother, and they have a confection business together. And we've talked about that confection business, where it's the you know the marshmallowy chocolate thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my grandfather, you know, they ended up having he ended up having eight kids, including my mom. And during World War II, it was kind of nice to have an uncle that lived there. Um, my great grandmother had already passed away by then, but. You know, Did she nice die of a broken heart because she never got to see her family? I mean, well, she got to see the kids on and off, you know, here and there. But, you know, it wasn't like you could just hop on a plane, you know, and make a make a trip over without any, um, you know, it cost a lot. And it was a big deal to, to travel and no, see, what our, see what our uh, family did for us, you know, our ancestors. Look what they did well, for us. They gave up that much. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I think I, I would have well, stayed. Unless there was, I, I, I know. I just <clears throat> there. There's that one reason's missing. Is like, why did he? I mean, if it's just to make a better life, did he? Uh, from what I understand, he was never as happy as he thought he would be. Mm, and he couldn't go back. Well, not at that point. And his wife was gone, so he wasn't going to go back to the family home. I mean, my my grandfather never saw him again after he was five. Wow. I know. So he That's grew up. Sad. But he was the nice, my, my grandfather was the nicest guy because he was raised by an awesome grandma or mother, you know. Oh, of course. Yeah. And um, and she was good to have around because he, they didn't live with her. They lived down the street from her. But she, you know, always had, my mom would run to her house whenever she was getting into trouble. <laughs> it was just a block or so away. And then she'd fly over and hang out with grandma. <clears throat> wow. But you know, so you had to they had to have other family members involved. You know, because it was a big family. But to have like four of the five kids being pulled over to a new country. And you have to wonder why did why did they leave? And I just don't think that was a good enough reason. I don't either from what you're saying. I mean, it, it I don't know. He must have been really stubborn too cuz I would have just said, "You know what? This isn't working out and now there's a war." So I think after the war that I'm just going to take my daughter here and, and go back and see if I can, you know, get back and live. Maybe they just, maybe they were writing. I don't know. I'd love to know if there were letters or something saying, no, you ain't coming back. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe, yeah, maybe they didn't like each other. Maybe he left, you know, we, uh, who knows? Yeah. They liked uh, each other enough to have five kids, but well, hey, <laughs> you know, things were different then, I guess. Exactly. So. Yeah, but you know that kind of thing. It's like what was there a big age difference between them? No, no. Yeah, I think so. they were a year apart. Yeah. So, you know that kind of thing. It's like why do people leave? Why do they come here? And you know, a lot of times they're escaping wars. And like my mom, her reason was that after World War II, all of the guys her age were dead. <laughs> Not all of them, but quite a few of them, because of the World War II. And she was just at that age where she would have, you know, finished school and maybe gotten married. But there was nobody left. All those really nice guys that she knew from school were gone. Hmm. So there's a good reason to leave, I guess, if that's what you really want to do with your life nowadays. It's like, do you have well, do you have any records of like of him when he came here and the sister in law and stuff? Did they like share a house with the whole family or would, you know, was he renting up space from someone or did he I have actually, his own place? I actually found an address of his and I I found it on oh. Google Maps where it, what it looks like now. 
Oh, and, cool. Yeah, in, in um, I think this one was in Queens, Astoria. Yeah. So he had enough money to come and buy his own place and stuff. Well, and what did he do? What did he do back? He was a tailor. He was the journey? cabinet maker. The cabinet maker. Okay. Yeah, so he could always be employed. That's no big deal. He knows how to do stuff. So yeah, yeah, they all did. They all came over with something. That's amazing. Yeah, and then like my mom, her older brother was given these books to um, learn how to to read English and whatever, and he was not interested. Until he was became a prisoner of war during World War II, you <laughs> know, probably oh, no. would have been helpful to know some English. Yeah, but, um, yeah, but you know, he came back. The Americans let him go, and he came back in this nice new um, long coat. You know, <laughs> and this was had been fed the whole time. You know, it was yeah. unlike the other way around. If that you know German captured you and yeah, during, exactly during Nazi times. Um, oh my, that's fascinating. Yeah. This is a good dig here. So, yeah. But anyway, my mom learned English. She came over. She went to business school in Germany and did bookkeeping. So, you know, that's something that you can do anywhere because numbers are always the same unless they're word problems, and, right? And look at those numbers came falling down to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Well, you know, it does. You know, my dad had horses. My grandpa had horses. I was a horse freak. So it yeah. happens. You grow up you with know. it. And it's something mm -hmm. that either you really like a lot and you follow or you just like distance yourself. And I did not want to be a bookkeeper or a finance person. But that's what happened. Yeah, exactly. And here we are. Yes, for sure. So anyway, yeah, that's. You know, creating an historical creating a historical narrative based on ancestral records and family stories. And I always heard the family stories about this, but going through the records and actually making a timeline and see what was happening during that timeline and where people were specifically, the years they immigrated, how old were they, what did they do when they were living here in the United States? And where exactly did they live and with whom? Talk about hardships. Yeah, like, you're, like you were saying, people really went through a lot, and here we are, reaping the benefits from it. And yeah, we should be really happy with what they did for us. Let me, let me ask you on the technical side of this and the searching side of this. Do you have a set list of questions you ask yourself, or do you, you know, like why did they leave? How many, you know, the what do you need to find out when you start looking for like the story? Well. The stuff that I already knew about, um, I would dig down and try to find it. Like, I'm still trying to find stuff around my other great-grandfather in Germany because he was adopted by um, the man that he called dad, you know. But he was already, like, I don't know, eight years old. So, I wanted to find more on him and try to figure out the timeline and when people moved from one town to the next like in that on that same side my grandmother's side i'm seeing when they left a certain town and slowly made it to the town that their family is in now you know so you see the timeline and in this way when you're looking for things to happen it's like well when did they get married oh they got married and then that's when they moved to that town i see and that's when the family really got bigger we should well, post a cheat sheet on your blog of like the top 10 questions you need to ask yourself you know when you're starting to look because well, if, you know nobody ever you know everybody the death certificates have great information on there as sad as they are and stuff but they have relatives they have you know dates they have a lot of stuff as do like the marriage records like you said that's how you found the town oh sure but so. they pop up and then you already see where they are. So if you can read it, <laughs> you know, if it's in English and it's printed, like a lot of the stuff is here, that's great. But if it's in another language and it's like, what am I even looking for on here? It's like anything that's on any of the forms that you see coming up, you should just, you know, consider everything. And that's that's really how you can form the narrative. A lot of times you're just getting you're just getting data. It's like, oh, there's 17 kids in this family. Okay, well, I wonder where the rest of them ended up. And that's where those stories can start. It's like, oh, that's the kid that came to America. Why did they come to America? Oh, both of their parents died 
they would have had to live with their sister. Maybe they did live with their sister. Maybe that didn't work out. I'm going to go to America and have a better life. See ya. 16 years old, 15 years old, all by himself. I have one of those. And then you find out the that family's history because they posted everything on their family tree about him. And you see what he did and who he married. And I didn't know I had cousins in Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that was one that would happened in the hmm, 1860s, I think. So there was already some of my people from Germany here in 1860s. I didn't even know about it until a couple of years ago. Wow. So that's the thing to do is just to track where everybody went. And then you can start looking into it. Well, this has been enlightening today and amazing. And you have a great story here. And thank you for sharing it, too. It's a great story and it's a terrible story, you know? Yeah. But, you know, it, it, it's nice to shed light, like we have been saying all this time, what these people have done for us, you know, what our, what our past ancestors went through. We hope you found this episode useful. Thanks for listening. The Twice Removed podcast is produced by Linda Anderson and Gina Glass. All opinions expressed are of our own and of our guests. For more information and upcoming guests, please visit our website, twicerremove.net.